Unicorn Herd, we've got a really cool addition tonight because Molly was kind enough to jump in when we had a last minute cancellation. Other than that, we're actually booked all the way through July, but don't let that hesitate um, or hold you back from reaching out to us and trying to, to join. Um, I think the rest of the episodes in December are going to be the rest of the Unicorn Chef staff. So be prepared for some crazy Kovar, some Mike on crack, and I don't know, uh, not so Caitlin. That's that's the, I feel like I, I, I started strong and then I, I went down. Um, so uh, as always, uh, share what you make. Hashtag Unicorn Chef. We love to see it. Um, and Molly, uh, our charity for tonight. Yes. Uh, thank you, Bryson. Yeah, our char charity for tonight is a Minnie's Food Pantry. Um, it's local to Plano, Texas, um, but I absolutely encourage you to donate to your own local food pantries. Uh, this organization operation has been so incredible for the community. Um, you can go online and donate directly monetarily. Um, we've also gone through and found household goods and other things to donate, and they have a shop there. And I think that for every dollar, it feeds about five or three uh, full meals um, to people in the community. So you have the food operation right there. People can drive up, have boxes of food loaded in the, in the back of their car. And then right next to it is the retail store. Um, so I would say that's incredible. Uh, donate money, donate um, household items, et cetera, and um, also canned goods. And there's a list of all that on their website. Um, so that's Minnie's Food Pantry. Um, but yeah, please check out your local uh, food pantries. It makes a huge, huge difference. So. Yeah, and particularly with the the, the cold season coming up, it's even harder yes. on, on the families. Absolutely, yeah. So this could be a quick recipe. Those are my favorites when we get from starting to plate fast. Yes. Um, but first question before we get there, Molly, what are you drinking? I am drinking, all right, um, an aperitivo. <laughs> so let's see. Wait, here. you have three hands? Uh, I do have three hands. Thank you. I'm doing this all on my own. Um, so this is an aperitivo risotto. Let's see. Here you go. This is the first first ingredient um, okay. of it. Let's see. It has one part this, two parts Prosecco. So here's the... Um, delicious Prosecco, and then uh, basil as well. So pulled some of this from, uh, from the garden and uh, ice. And it, uh, you know, gets you ready. It's great for cooking, great for beginning of the meals, delights, senses. So I'll be sipping on this tonight. Um, might have another drink depending on how, how long this goes. But again, yeah, like you mentioned, this will be a very straightforward. I love this recipe. It's really great for weeknights. It's about 20, 30 minutes. It's one of my favorite pasta. So I'm really excited to be cooking with y'all. Uh, this will be good. Yeah. So you just reminded me, I wanted to add basil to this recipe. So I just Ooh, went very, very nice. Fresh basil is where it's at. Love fresh herbs. So. Cheers. What are you drinking tonight? What's uh, your... Nothing quite so fancy, but mm. keeping with the, the lemon, uh, water with lemon. That's delicious. Very refreshing. <laughs> ah, very good. Lemon will go well. This recipe has lemon, lemon peels, so I think that's that's great. Okay, we'll see here. Shall we begin? Maybe lead us. Lead us. Okay, awesome. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to go ahead and start the pasta. Um, I have linguine, but you can use a variety of different types. Um, you know, spaghetti pasta. I've done it with. Um, oh yes, that's I'm really. Right that's gonna be wonderful with the mushrooms, They're really good uh, size-wise. So yeah, I'm gonna start that. Let's go ahead and put some water to boil, um, set it on high heat. Um, I usually boil water, so a very large pot. Um, I like to go ahead and boil it with a strainer inside just to make it a bit easier, um, but definitely do as you like. Um, that'll be going. So we'll get that started, get the water boiling. Uh, when we do the pasta, we will cook it quite al dente because so we'll finish it off in the sauce. So take off about two minutes um, from the cook time, and uh, that's when we'll go ahead and take it out of the water and get going. Okay, so while the water is boiling, uh, also make sure and salt your water. We will be using some of the pasta water 
uh, in, in the final uh, sauce to kind of make it delicious, bind together all those wonderful things. Um, okay. So this is the fun part. We're starting with some delicious mushrooms. Uh, let's talk about the product first. Uh, Dallas and some other cities around, I know in Chicago, um, Florence, um, I don't know, quite a few places has a store called Italy, and they have a lot of great Italian imports. Um, I went there today to pick up some mushrooms um, and some other ingredients. But the mushrooms we're going to use tonight, because um, you can get a variety. Um, I've done a single type before. It, it just kind of varies on what you have, but I think most work out really well. Um, but tonight I got some uh, organic shiitake mushrooms from Texas. So let's see if I can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, total needs to be about a pound. Um, and then got just a, a medley as well. So um, we'll start with a pretty large um, container. Tonight I'm going to do this to kind of cook the, the mushrooms in. Um, so we will put about two tablespoons of olive oil um, and set the um, your, your oven, or sorry, not your oven, your stove top to about medium high. Um, this way we're going to cook about half of the mushrooms at first. You want to make sure and not have too many um, in at one time because it will start to steam. Um, and we want to make sure and get these really crispy. So while that heats up, um, I'll go ahead and show you what kind of mushrooms I'm working with. And, and Bryson, I want to see, like, what, what do you what do you have going? Uh, I, got, I got baby Bellas. Oh, so nice. Everyone's actually survived. Awesome. There you go. Yeah, these are great to snack on. Um, yeah, the most important thing is to have them kind of bite-sized. So you can, don't worry about chopping them or anything, but kind of break them apart. Yeah, grab them with your hands and just sort of break them up. Just have fun. This is, you know, it's a great part of cooking is being able to touch and, and taste and see things. So, um, yeah, this is about how much I have for a pound. Um, and then we'll make sure and keep, get this heated up a bit before putting it in there. Um, and kind of this is a bit of a moment where we'll wait till it all heats up. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. I, I love crispy mushrooms are uh, delicious. And with the the lemon and the shallots later and a bit of cream. It's a fantastic weeknight recipe. Um, so let's see. Yeah, we got some good shapes in here. I think these are the, uh, yeah, the medley, got some shiitake, all that fun stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put about half of this in here, make sure not to overcrowd it. And we're going to cook these completely undisturbed. Um, so I'm going to put probably about a third actually, depending on, depending on your, uh, the size of your container. And since the oven still, or sorry, the stove top's still heating up a bit, um, I'll probably keep it on here for about four minutes. You want to make sure and see that it's quite crispy, um, without burning. <laughs> but they are going to reduce quite a bit in size. So right now it seems like we're using a lot of mushrooms, but they are going to reduce down quite a bit. And uh, trust me, you'll, you'll want all of them. In, in yeah, the mushrooms have a high water content. That's part of why you have to worry about the steaming. That's also why they're going to shrink so much. Was, yep, was exactly. Process. Yeah. So I'm going to get mine going kind of quickly to show what the beautiful pot looks like. Meanwhile, so these are going to cook for a few minutes. We'll keep an eye on them. Um, I went ahead and got a plate um, with a paper towel on it, but since we're doing these in batches, um, we will cook this, put them on the plate, toss them into the salt, and then do the rest. So that's something that you can go ahead and kind of get, get prepared. Um, yeah, it's just a simple plate, have it near, near the stove and, and ready to go. Okay, so while that is going, Let's go ahead and prepare the shallots. Um, the recipe calls for two medium shallots. So I went ahead and just kind of love shallots. They definitely, for me, go between an onion and garlic, and they taste delicious. So with these shallots, we're going to finely dice them. And, um, and I don't know about you, but I love having little mixing bowls 
while cooking. Then once we do these, you can kind of turn them off to the side or just keep them on the cutting board. I think uh, e either works well. But uh, so I finally chopped these. Yeah, Sometimes you, know, you, definitely... you can use onions in a pinch if you are you don't have shallots. Exactly. You can use onions. I, I've definitely had some white onions before. I've thrown in a bit of garlic yeah. as well. White onions. Yeah. Those work just fine. I'm going to go ahead and finish this. I have one more shallot to cut up. Keeping an eye on the time just to see roughly how long to keep the mushrooms in there. About halfway through, I might actually toss them a bit in the in the container just to um, make sure they get crispy on all sides. So what got you into cooking to start with? Do what? What got you into cooking to begin with? Oh, great question. So I worked at a bakery, like a mom and pop shop bakery, uh, early after college. Um, let me grab a, a spoon real fast to stir this. Um, and I fell in love with with food, with, uh, with baking specifically. So the head pastry chef there, his name was Eric, and he used to work at the Four Seasons um, as a pastry chef and he kind of lived internationally, just a great guy. And he and his wife were just like, you know what, I'm tired for working, you know, at uh, this company, I want to try to make it on my own. Um, they rented out a shop in a town and he was committed to making uh, sourdough breads. So absolutely like real sourdough, no like sour flavoring, like I realized some sourdough is, which is just terrible um and then he also made you know from scratch croissants danishes muffins and then all the pastries um and so i worked front of house that was kind of like my initial thing i get up there about 5 a.m everything would come out of the oven and i would just like have about an hour to put them all in baskets all the labels on all the display case and it was um hard but it was just heaven because to see the first people kind of come in, you know, like we have our regulars that would be there right when we open at 6.30. Uh, wouldn't even have to tell me what they, they wanted. I just had like a Danish ready for them or the people that come in later for the bread. Um, was such just a, a wonderful, wonderful time. And, and I think just seeing like the love and care they put into what they made um, and, and just the pride in it really changed the way that I approach food. And um and, and as well as with the customers. So there was one visiting poet at one of the universities and she would come in first and she's like, oh, don't mind me. I'm going to take a bit. I'm going to first, I first eat with my eyes. So she would just go through all the display, you know, for case and just like take it and be like, no, I need a moment. Just, this is beautiful. Um, and then I'll get like a pastry or something. And so um, that was a wonderful experience. I would trade people for their uh, bread, for stuff they grew in their garden. Um, I feel like it was just really easy to eat very well and just know where everything came from and be connected with the growers and, and all of that. Um, and so I feel like that. And then my sister-in-law's family is from the Midwest. Like they're all from Minnesota and then, uh, and, and they cook like prolifically. Like they just have, they love to cook. It's a very big family tradition. So I think kind of a combination of those things has made this something that I, I need for my soul. You know, like I, uh, if I'm ever down, I'm like, all right, let's make the recipe. Like this is really, really good. Um, but do you have a I, derivative uh, to this recipe without mushrooms? Do what? Do you have a derivative to this recipe without mushrooms? Um, I don't, but honestly, I think that. I've seen quite a bit with, um, you can do like uh, prosciutto, you can do stuff with bacon. I think that the the mushrooms give it a bit of heartiness. That's lovely. That, that is um, a great addition. I'm going to throw prosciutto in with my, with this in crispy. You should. Yes. I was like that, that adds a nice crispy uh, factor as well and a good uh, complexity to, to it. Um, I think I have about a minute more on this batch. How are your mushrooms doing? Uh, mine are close. Okay, yeah. I'm like keeping an eye. I'm like I want them to be nice and crispy. I don't want them to burn. Um, so mine, are, yeah, mine are getting. They've 
mine have reduced about half in size. How about, oh, there's your prosciutto. Yeah, yeah. that's lovely. Yeah, that's good to have. I'm glad I asked. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's I, my favorite combination on pizza is mushroom and pepperoni. And so oh, it's yeah. going to have kind of a similar sort of uh, that those, those uh, flavors together. Very nice. Yeah, I cooked up a bit of bacon earlier. We didn't have any prosciutto, but I have a bit of crispy bacon bit. So I might throw that in the end just to <laughs> that out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put my first batch of mushrooms on the paper towel on the plate. Take a moment to uh, toss them in some salt. And then uh, start again with a, two more tablespoons of olive oil. And yeah, you want to make sure you get your olive oil heated back up again before you throw it in. Exactly, yes. I, I, I wait a bit. Um, the pan should be a bit hot, so it won't, be as, it won't take as long as last time to heat it up. But um, definitely wait, wait about 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put some more olive oil in. Starting to smoke a bit. Olive oil doesn't have a super high um, smoking point, but I think about medium high heat should be should be just about right. All right, yeah. All right, so I have about this much more. I'll go ahead and throw about good bite-sized pieces. Go ahead and put it on the plate. And then, um, yes, and then here's another. Yes, there it is, okay. All right, so I'll show you how do your mushrooms look. This is round one. Mine are looking okay. There, I will um, hold one up. I'll put some salt for this deal. So, okay. You can see it's got a, got a nice golden crisp. Oh, very nice. Oh, that looks delicious. You can always taste test. It's always a benefit of cooking, so you can try all the bits. Okay. So we have our shallot cut. Um, depending on whether you're gonna do a fresh lemon or not, we're going to zest one lemon and then also uh, get about, let's see, I think it might be the full lemon juice um, or juice of a full lemon. We'll have that off to the side. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and zest the lemon. Have it on the cutting board next to the shallot. Very easy to put in at the right time. Always make sure to wash your lemon before dusting. It's an important part of your How do you focus on the lemon with just getting the pith versus like getting it deeper so you don't get that bitter part? Great question. So I think making sure that you don't dust down too much into the white bit, like really move it around um, to really just try to get the most bright yellow part. Um, so part of that, I don't know, I think that just kind of being fast with it, um, moving the lemon around, rotating it. And it is the best way I know of to, uh, to keep it going. So bad. It doesn't take too long. Usually it's like I have about two, two, uh, two goes, two strokes. All right. The right. of mushrooms is going. Awesome. Okay. So... I'll show you here, I have about this much lemon zest. That's about the zest of one lemon. And then I'll go ahead and cut the lemon in half and be using the juice too. All right, how is your water doing? Mine's starting to steam a bit. Because the- is not quite there yet. And that's all okay. right, I could, I could play catch up. No worries, My, uh, yeah. I think we're gonna take a little bit longer too, so we'll, we'll work it okay. out again. Yeah, that sounds good. And and um, the pasta can, yeah, it, it can wait a bit. We can, the cool thing about the mushroom is, is that once we finish this, we can turn the heat off, catch it up, and then turn it back on when we're going to put the shallots and everything else in there. Um, all right, I'm going to do one stir about halfway through. Make sure it gets on both sides of the, the mushroom, makes it nice and crispy. Um, let's see. Okay. So in the meantime, since there's really not much to do here, um, one thing I like to do is kind of go ahead and measure out the cream um, and um, get the parsley and the butter and Parmesan ready. So um, here I've gone ahead and measured out, uh, we'll do half a cup of heavy cream. So I'll just have that kind of ready near the pasta. A big part of this is when we assemble it, 
it's nice to have all of the ingredients ready and close by. Um, we will or if you're a menu, just kind of eyeball it. Yeah, eyeball it. Honestly, it's like I love to taste the test, you know, just, or um, yeah, test it. Yeah, try it out. <laughs> the aperitivo is working on me, so pardon my uh, my language. Yeah, there's another one, but uh, we'll see. Okay. I have another drink ready, but I'm not going to go for it. Here is half a cup of grated Parmesan. So I went ahead and bought it that was already grated, but it's wonderful to grate your own. It smells amazing as it's being grated. So I'll have that over by the side. Uh, we'll do half a cup of the recipe proper and then um, some more on top as we're ready to serve it. All right, my mushrooms are doing okay. How's your second batch doing? We're working our way. Probably okay, good. Way. Going a little faster because my, my pan was hotter. Yeah. All right. Um, another thing, as, as everything's like, it's water starting to boil, the mushrooms are going, um, have about a third of a cup of fresh herbs chopped. Um, I have Italian parsley here. Um, what kind do you have going? Do you have yep, some? I got the Italian parsley. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. I did a rough chop with these. I called it a rustic cut. Okay, there you go. A rustic cut. It it's a rustic cut. Yeah, close it's lovely. Yeah, it's rustic. It's lovely. I love it. It'll taste delicious. It's all going to toss together and smell really good and bright with the lemon and the fresh herbs. Um, so go ahead and do a yeah, rough chop, kind of tear it apart however you like. Um, my second round of mushrooms are done. They look really nice and crispy. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off just for a bit as you go ahead and season this batch with some salt. Get all ready to assemble in a, bit, a little bit. Yeah. One thing I love about this recipe is that you really don't need many pots or pans to, to work with it. It's mostly two, you know, and easy to clean and delicious to eat. So I'm going to go ahead and salt this and put it off to the side. Okay. Um, the only other thing that I went ahead and prepared, it's a two tablespoons of butter cubed. So I just put it, cut that up a bit, put that in a container, have it off to the side. Okay. Let's take a look here. Um, okay. We are done with the crispy mushrooms. Um, okay, so we're going to wait for this next part until the pasta is mostly cooked. Um, what will what on the pasta in? Do what? Have you already put your pasta in? Not yet. Oh, oh no, not yet. It's about to boil. And yeah, so mine's mine started boiling, so I'm going to start mine. Okay, go ahead and put it in. Do about two minutes uh, less than the cooking time. Uh, we'll be cooking it the rest with the salt, the sauce and everything, so make sure it's quite al dente. Um, mine has 11 minutes in total, so I'm going to do it for nine minutes. Um, and mine's almost at a boil. But we'll go ahead and turn the heat off of the mushroom pan um, because once the pasta is ready, it's just going to be like showtime. So um, we will take a moment. Um, but to mentally prepare, once the pasta is uh, not uh, two minutes before ready on, on the package, we're going to put the mushrooms back in the pan and then also cook shallots for about two minutes. Um, shallots, onions, garlic, whatever you end up using. Um, those can act absolutely crisp up or start burning quite a bit. So we want to make sure and have the pasta kind of ready to go um, to kind of assemble it. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. We're almost here on this. And then, like I said, I, I'd recommend putting the, uh, getting your heavy cream measured out, half a cup of that, half a cup of the uh, Parmesan that's grated, have your lemon zest ready, um, your lemon ready to, to juice, and then your two tablespoons of butter cubed. So I'm going to take a moment. Mine probably has a minute left before putting the noodles in, so I will enjoy another sip of the aperitivo with basil. Yeah, what's the story behind that drink? Mm. So I had the first Aperol spritz. This is kind of similar to it. And there's an Aperol spritz on standby, but I think I'm just going to work on this right now, uh, probably for tonight. But 
I saw it in a lot of places. Saw it at the shop Italy. They have like three restaurants there, a, a pizza and pasta bar, and they just were lined with Aperol. And so um, I learned a bit about the aperitivo being, you know, kind of the beginning drink. It's uh, different from the digestivo. It's in Italian. Um, yeah. Anyway, so this is a, a good beginner drink to kind of begin cooking with or at the start of a of a of a meal. Um, so yeah, I keep seeing it on the menu. I just think it's really light and refreshing and, and delicious. And it's fun that you can put um, basil in this one. I think that really brightens it up and it seemed to go well with a mushroom pasta. Um, still a little bit of research. I was like, okay, this seems delightful. And it has ice cubes. So being in Texas, that really, <laughs> that really is nice <laughs> getting year, year round. Still in the seventies here. So I don't know when we're gonna get um, much much cooler temperatures so it's it's nice especially cooking over hot stove too you know it's pretty pretty nice have but, you been um, to Italy? yes i have i uh went to rome and florence and um mostly stayed in rome and right near the vatican for quite a bit did a family trip there and it was a it was a good time i'd love to go back definitely Beautiful place. Have you been to Italy? Not Italy. Italy. Uh, actually, I uh, haven't. I, I grew oh, up in Europe. Europe. But I've been oh, okay. Well, so. Yeah. Is that somewhere you'd like to go? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go. I want to eat everything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Do an entire tour. Yeah. I agree. That's any chance to go back would be a very welcome. So, all right, my pasta water is going. Make sure, as I mentioned before, salt your water or salt your water pretty well. Make and, it taste like the sea. Yes, make it taste like the sea. I also heard of it like tears of the gods. You know, this is just a beautiful thing. I don't know where, where that came from, but yeah. So we'll go ahead and cook that. I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer for nine minutes, just so I don't miss it. So what got you into cooking? What are some yeah. What are some memories you've had or how did you become so interested in cooking? You're quite the chef. Uh, well, uh, it was at uh, Officer Basic course when I was a second lieutenant. Yep. And I realized I didn't know how to feed myself. So, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to go out and eat all the time. It's not healthy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And... I mean, L plus you're, you're practically broke at that age. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I should teach myself to cook. And this is, you know, the internet is still young. So it wasn't like you could just hop on the internet, and look up everything. Right. So yeah. I, I went more with this um, approach of um, I'm going to just try to make recipes that I've seen before. And yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. And it was a whole bunch of terrible things. And then I started figuring out some things and I started getting better and better and here you are. It. Turned out, I, mean, I, I guess I had sort of a natural knack for it, which I yeah. discovered by by doing. Yeah, that's wonderful. What are what are some of your favorite weeknight things to cook? Do you have uh, a well, idea? I'll probably go with. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. What's a weeknight thing? Um, so I kind of like I like having some patterns. So it's because part yeah. of it is not just the cooking. It's not having to think about what I want to cook. So exactly. that's one thing I like about Wednesdays is somebody else has picked the recipe. So I'm just like, all right, well, that's what I'm doing. They've chosen. So that's one night I don't have to think about it. Yeah. Um, uh, taco Tuesday. So, mm -hmm. and I'll make different varieties of tacos. Like um, a lot of the experimentation I've been doing lately was with different kinds of like al pastor. Oh, nice. Like, and pork al pastor. So that's, you can see, yeah. um, we did that recipe with uh, Chris Krebs a number of months ago. And then you can, see me like innovating off that yeah um i also like doing like a, a slow a slow roast um shredded chicken oh, okay tacos. yeah nice that like you just throw it in and you just come back at the end of the day shred it boom done throw it in taco. smells amazing tastes delicious yeah no i i feel yeah yeah I'm quite the fan of rotisserie chicken. That is something that I feel like on a weeknight when it's like, all right, what do we make? Very quick. Tons of recipes you can do with just like chicken. Um, 
And the bones too, being able to make a good bone broth and yep. chicken broth is like chef's kiss. It's really, yeah, really good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's winter. I'll, I'll make probably four or five uh, chicken soups from scratch. And I think a lot of people are kind of intimidated by it. It's like, it's so easy. Take a whole it chicken. Is. Yeah. Throw it in a pot. Yes. Let the water do the work. And it smells amazing. You like. Done. Chicken soup. Yes. No, homemade chicken soup. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a game changer. And I just love how it makes the house smell. You know, it's like, it isn't that complicated. It's not, it takes a bit of time. And it's like, all right, just throw it in. Keep it on low, let it, you know, let it do its thing. And it, it makes so much. I'm a big fan of freezing quite a bit, doing a lot of prep, you know, meals, even just freezing a bunch of stock. And then once it goes down, bring it back and using homemade stock for stuff, I think definitely makes a, a big, big difference in quite a few of the recipes. Um, These right, in here are in danger. I just keep looking at them and going like, hmm. I know. I'm gonna have to try one mushroom. I feel like that's that's reasonable. There's quite a bit. It definitely did go down in size, which is uh, mm. was of course expected. Mm. Yep. But mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a meal in itself. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I gotta stop. Yeah, I know. This is gonna be gone. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat it all right now. It's like ah, I'm gonna put it on the table. Five minutes left. Got some stuff prepped. Yeah. But, um, it's really good. That's pretty good. All right. How are your noodles doing? So I'm four minutes from my noodles coming off. Is that the okay. window that I want to start my onions? Awesome. Yeah, let's um let's say in about when it's about two minutes left for the no, let's, let's say three minutes left for the pasta. Let's go ahead and turn our um Dutch oven all back, this on. back on. Yes, and um and start we'll throw in first the mushrooms and then uh the shallots or onions or whatever you're working with. Um let's see real fast. Um, and at this point, you can put probably like a teaspoon or so of olive oil, but it, it doesn't really require it. Just if you want to kind of put a splash in there and then throw the uh, the shallots and the onions, or then the mushrooms back in there, the and the other onions, that'll, that'll work. So I'm going to do it one more minute for mine. I'm going to go ahead and put a splash of olive oil and have everything on standby. One thing with using quite a bit of oil with the mushrooms is that the mushrooms do absorb it quite a bit. So... Just be mindful of that. Um, I don't think it'll make too much of a difference, but it's kind of good to know if all that works. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine back on. Let's do about medium to medium high um, and grab the mushrooms and the onions or shallots or garlic, whatever you're using. Go ahead and put them back in the pan. And I threw mine in, but yeah, if you want to wait a minute or so for it to heat back up, I think that's wise. Didn't quite think on that, but it's not a game changer. All right. Start smelling so good. All right. Once you have it in there, let's give it a nice little swirl. Make sure the shallots hit the pan. And we're going to cook this intentionally for about two minutes. Um, and then soon we'll be assembling quite a bit. So we'll put that in there. Um, cook it until it's about translucent. Keep an eye on it. Um, turn down your heat a bit if it's cooking too quickly and starting to brown. Uh, but we want to make sure it's like softened, translucent. And delicious. Okay. And I'm throwing my prosciutto in now to crisp. Excellent. Yes, good idea. Nice and crispy, and that prosciutto flavor will go really well with the mushroom and the shallots. I'm so glad you recommended it. <laughs> Yay! I'm excited to hear how it is. <laughs> we oh, have a couple of bacon bits, but I think prosciutto is like the way to go. 
Yeah, um, bacon's gonna be a little overwhelming prosciutto. You get that like more the the subtle salty smoky. Yes, I agree with that. Um, okay, so while I kind of stir it around, take a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and get one cup of the pasta water and have it off to the side. Um, make sure I don't forget. Just gonna go ahead and like dig in. Um, mine has about two minutes left. Now one minute. Yep, I'm at one minute. One minute, yeah. So here's the, the Tears of the God, the steamy, salty water. It's going to make all the difference in the world. All right. Man, how are your mushrooms and onions smelling? My, my shallots and mushrooms are smelling amazing. Yeah, this is uh, this is incredible. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I love I love when I'm cooking these kinds of meals, and my appetite just continues to build and build and build. As and then, first bite, then oh. so good. Okay. Oh, you know what? I just thought of something. Instead of mushrooms, yes. olives. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's true. That's a good like hearty texture, delicious flavor. I think that would. You're really good with it. I think that's that just, a really good that just clicked. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it and it just like started thinking of yeah. Uthanesca and then olives and boom. I I think you're I think you're quite right. Okay, so right now my my pasta's done. I'm going to remove it from the heat, turn it off, and then combine the pasta to the mushrooms and shallots. So I have my pot. I'll show in a second. I'm just gonna literally dump it in. It's quite hot, so use some hot pads. Don't burn yourself. Not worth it. Well, it is worth it, but just don't do it. That's true. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. All right, this is wonderful. It's coming together. Okay, so right here, as you can see, I'm gonna toss it with the mushrooms and the shallots. And then we're going to add the one cup of pasta water. And drizzle it in. This will also help kind of deglaze the pan so all the delicious bits that were cooked with the mushroom, the shallots, kind of come off the pan and get into the sauce. Okay. And then we're also, once kind of stir that around. I'm just kind of keeping it light in here and mixing it all together. We're also going to put the half a cup of cream. And so just going you know, to start pouring that. We've got this the Pyrex here. Um, and then as you do that, it's really starting to look delicious. Um, have your heat on medium heat. Right now we're gonna kind of make sure it thickens up a bit as it combines. I don't know if you mentioned it, but because you, you were talking about the the tears of God with the salt, but uh, when we when we're taking the water from the uh, pasta, it's the starch yeah. in the water that helps bind the thick in the sauce. Exactly. Yeah. No, that that's that is on point, and that makes such a big difference. It's like if you. Don't do it. I mean, yeah, it just makes a big difference. Uh, I highly recommend trying to remember when making pasta, even if, you know, you're making some of the red sauce or anything else. I think just having a habit of getting half a cup to a cup of the pasta water before draining it is really good to um, to finish it all off, even if the recipe doesn't call for it. It's, it's really very good to have on hand. Did you uh, so, put your uh, Parmesan in? Um, so not quite yet. Right now we're just going to do it on medium, tossing it constantly until it's like slightly thickened. Um, and then after that, we're going to remove it from the heat and put all the other delicious bits in there. Um, so mine probably has about 30 more seconds um, until it has thickened. And this is when you're constantly kind of stirring it, making sure it's coming together. How's yours looking? Um, I think I'm a little bit more than 30 seconds from thickening. Okay. Sounds good. And yeah, like this is where you keep an eye on it, see what works. I'm probably going to do about 30 more seconds. And then again, we'll, since we'll be putting in Parmesan, um, it will also thicken it as well, make it a bit of a cheesy, creamy sauce. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn mine off, um, turn the heat off. Okay. 
So at this point, we're gonna remove the pot from heat. I'm going to take it off of this burner because I think it's still quite quite hot and everything else is gonna to come together really well um, without any any heat aside from the what's on the with the pasta in the pan. So I'm gonna move it over. All right, so what we have left is the Parmesan. It's right here, it's half a cup. And let's see. And mix it again as you're pouring everything in, just make sure and turn it. I love tongs for this. I think it really combines things really well. We're also going to put the lemon zest. So I have that from the cutting board. This is when you're really going to start making, you know, smelling the brightness to it all to kind of cut the cream and, and the cheese. Okay. And then we're also going to put the two tablespoons of butter that are cubed. Went ahead and prepped that. It looks all together, but uh, cubing them up a bit kind of helps disperse it, um, which will be good for this. Okay. Make sure you get all the zest in here. Um, after this, we're going to do lemon juice. I like it to be quite bright, so I recommend doing a whole lemon, but again, this is uh, to taste. One thing you can do, I, I do have a lemon squeezer, but it's not on hand right now, so you can just use your hand and squeeze and catch any of the seeds as it comes. That was one thing I, I learned that was very valuable at the bakery was like, your hands are sometimes the best tools. So it's always just like, figure it out. <laughs> you can like trust your hands, you know, like they they go quite far and they're, they're wonderful, wonderful things. Don't need a tool for everything. You got good things here. Okay. So I got one half a lemon, gonna do another half. And since it's off the heat, it uh, allows you for a bit more flexibility on not having to constantly stir it. So. You can take a second to blend it. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use the tongs to toss it. It's starting to smell really, really good. And then the last stage here, mm, yum. to really brighten it, is to throw in the parsley. And um, I'm doing about half a cup. I think I, again, these, these bits are kind of to taste. So at this point, you can kind of start or have a moment and taste a bit, see how much you want. You can always put a bit more parsley and Parmesan on the plates at the very end. And then last but certainly not least, some black um, pepper. I have some fresh, I think fresh ground is amazing, but use whatever you have. I think that really, and it smells so good. I think one of the, the best things in the kitchen, I think is a fresh uh, pepper grinder. It's like made so many meals, so delicious. So you can just smell it, you know, instantly and it's a lot of fun. So, okay. You gotta, you gotta see Alan Friedman. He is the king of the pepper grinder. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I can absolutely appreciate that. He has like multiple types, and he is like he can describe the different kinds and like how he gets it. I mean, it's a game changer, right? Like, I, I felt like I didn't appreciate it until I had like this is the first one I got at a Central Market, and it's a twofer. You know, it has a uh, the fresh pepper grinder at the bottom, salt at the top, and. And uh, since I'm out of pepper in the other one, I'm going to go ahead and just use that. It's a lot chunkier, but it's quite delicious. And I like to load it up with it. Okay. Mwah. Mwah. Chef's kiss. How is it? Did you have a bite? I haven't had a bite, but I've uh, tasted my sauce. So I'm going to. Oh, my gosh. That's far. Okay. So where, where are you at right now? I'll go ahead and I'm about to put mine to the side and have I'm, my I'm, first bite. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Let's do this. All right. Let's see. Get it, do a little twirl. Make sure there's a good amount in there. I'll put a little more parsley on top, probably some Parmesan later, but this is good. And then just need a fork, which is uh, awesome. Got a fork. Okay. 
Make sure and get some mushroom in there. Got warm over here. <laughs> all, the, yes. all the heat. Same here. I need some good ice. Okay. Oh, we know you're okay. I'm, I'm gonna take my on. bite and then we gotta take our, our, our picture. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sample my wares. Mm-hmm. Smells amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That'll do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. You got to get your food in shot. All right. It's delicious pasta. Okay. Mm. Yay. <laughs> Another successful unicorn chef in the books. If you could remind the folks how to donate, where to donate. Yes, uh, to Minnie's Food Pantry, and they can be found online um, at minnie'sfoodpantry.org. You can donate monetarily. If you're in the local area, you can donate canned goods. They have a list online. We're also household uh, goods and appliances. Since they have a store that directly, for every one dollar spent, uh, feeds uh, ha has three meals that are that are uh, sponsored. So, yeah, check it out. Or your local food pantry. All very important. But yeah, feed. Feed your, uh, feed your neighbor. Absolutely. Um, and hashtag unicorn chef, share what you cook at home, whether it's yeah. this recipe, whether it's another recipe, it's uh, just fun to see what everybody's making. So absolutely. Have a good night. All right. Cheers. Ciao. <laughs>